Hello everyone, my name is Casperanza, and in this video I will be doing an astrological chart reading for Lady Gaga. This isn't going to be everything about her astrologically, but these are the things that I find most interesting. And um, it feels kind of random to do a chart reading for her, but um, I don't know, Lady Gaga has always been one of my favorite celebrities, my favorite singers pop stars, whatever. I think she's just one of the coolest people ever. Um, you know, I remember when I was uh, in fourth grade and I heard Just Dance for the first time. And ever since then, I've always loved, I've always loved her. And uh, so I feel like I know her pretty well. And so it'll be fun to read her chart and to talk about her and, you know, all of that stuff. So before I begin, uh, the Rodden rating for this chart is DD, which basically means dirty data. <laughs> so it's like, it's not, it's not very good. This is, this, the birth, the birth day is probably correct. She was born on March 28th, 1986, but the time is probably completely wrong. Um, so she could have a Gemini ascendant or not have a Gemini ascendant, uh, it's really, I mean, no one knows. Um, but, you know, looking at this chart and looking at her life, I feel like this chart is actually pretty good. She does come off as a Gemini Ascendant, um, especially because it would put her Mercury, right? Mercury rules over her Gemini, and that would be in the 10th house, and she's a singer, um, right? And so if, if you're, she's going to be interested in a career involving Mercury, right? Mercury is communication, singing, journaling, merchandising, all of that stuff. And so I think it's really fitting that her Mercury would be in the 10th house and it would rule over her, her ascendant. Um, and then the alternative chart was a Capricorn rising, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure how I, how I feel about it. So we're just going to go along with this one. And even if the houses are wrong, uh, the planets themselves and the signs are still very interesting. So the first thing that jumps out to me is her Aries sun, her exalted Aries sun in the 11th house. Um, what's very interesting, so I know a lot of Aries women. Um, my mom is an Aries woman. Obviously, she's a woman. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. May, that might be debatable these days, but she's a woman as far as I know. And um you know, I, I feel like I really understand what the Aries woman looks like. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think, I feel like one of the main reasons why I believe in astrology is because you can really guess someone's sign if you've seen a lot of that sign around. And I've seen so many Aries women that I, I feel like I really understand what it looks like. And when I look at Lady Gaga, you can really tell she is an Aries woman. She looks like a lot of Aries women that I know. So I think that is very interesting. And just in general, right, she's very bold. She's very courageous. She definitely goes after what she wants. I mean, just very, just very Aries energy, like direct, like going after it, getting what you want. Um, uh, you can totally see that in her. And I think it's funny because I feel like there was this thing. Yeah, there was this thing going around where Lady Gaga had a penis. <laughs> and I think that's funny because Aries is a very masculine sign. So even Aries women have kind of like a butch or a very, um, a tough personality that gives them a kind of masculine energy about them that even if they're a woman, they still come off as kind of masculine. And then, um, almost kind of raw too. Like a lot of Aries women, there's something kind of raw and very, um, upfront about them, which I actually really like, maybe because I'm a Leo. So, you know, Leos and Aries people generally get along. And then um, she also has her son in the 11th house and 11th house is networks, hopes and dreams, connections, the audience, right? Because it's kind of the Aquarius house. It's all about the audience. And Lady Gaga very much values the applause, right? She made a song about the applause, she lives for the applause. She kind of lives for the group. She lives for being that public figure. 
which you can very much see with her son in the 11th house, which is why I think this chart is pretty accurate because a lot of celebrities and famous people usually have at least their son or a good dose of planets in the top left half of their chart. And then she also had Venus in the 11th house, which is kind of more of that 11th house energy. But what's very interesting is that Venus rules over aesthetics. And so it's making a square to... Is it making a square to her Uranus? No, it's making a trine. And Uranus is kind of like being eccentric, being crazy, kind of doing things out of the ordinary. Um, so I think it's interesting because I think Lady Gaga has a huge interest in fashion and her fashion choices are very weird. And you can see that with the Venus trine Uranus. Um, I also think that her fashion choices help a lot with gaining an audience and pulling people in, right? Like with her meat dress, for example, a lot of people think, a lot of people talked about that. People still talk about it and it happened like literally years ago, like at least five years ago. I can't remember what time, but people still talk about that. And, you know, it was a great marketing tactic. It was a great way to gain attention, to gain an audience, to get people um, to follow you. Um, so I think one of my favorite things about her chart is that she has Jupiter um, and Pisces. Uh, I have Jupiter and Pisces. I think it's just such a lovely placement. And just a few days ago, Jupiter went uh, retrograded back into Pisces. So um, maybe that's why I thought of Lady Gaga, because, you know, she has a Jupiter and Pisces and she has her MC in Pisces. And so when I think about Pisces, Pisces is like almost almost like the spiritual, very beautiful, like just this like unicorn energy, right? So like if Sagittarius is the masculine side of Jupiter, which is like the centaur and like masculine horses, I guess, Pisces to me is like the feminine horse. It's like the unicorn, right? And it's the feminine side of Jupiter. And um, it makes so much sense that her MC would be in Pisces because at least I hope so. I feel like it makes a lot of sense because um, her... Uh, you know, when when you watch her music videos and when you see her on stage, it really feels like she's taking you somewhere else. Like she's taking you to another world. And Jupiter is domicile in Pisces and MC is career. And so, you know, just by looking at her chart, you could tell this is someone who is going to be very successful in their career. Um, just very, very successful because Jupiter is benefic. She has um, a day chart. So Jupiter is her best planet. It's a conjunctor MC. It's like she was meant to do something great. She was meant to show the world something special. And it was probably flavored or bent towards singing and songwriting because she has her Mercury in the 10th house as well. And, um, you know, Mercury is debilitated in Pisces, but I've actually noticed that a lot of really intelligent people have Mercury in Pisces. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I feel like Mercury in Pisces is actually very intuitive um, and a very, you know, that these are people who just know things and can be very, you know, artistic and poetic. And, you know, again, you certainly see that in Lady Gaga's career and in her music videos. Um, and what I love so much about this Jupiter and Pisces is that it's making a trine to her moon and Pluto and Scorpio in the sixth house. And, you know, I love this so much because, <laughs> um, you know, moon and Scorpio is, it's, it's a very intense placement for the moon because the moon represents your emotions. It represents, uh, how you feel things on a day-to-day -day basis, what no one really sees. And so, Lady Gaga feels things very deeply. She is very passionate. She is, you know, I feel like a lot of people think of her as like some silly pop star who, you know, you know, she's like the new Madonna, you know, she's just like, a, like another flaky, empty pop star, but she's very deep and she, she is very soulful in the way she makes things. And you know, Scorpio is all about death and rebirth, along with Pluto, right? Like the Pluto conjunct the moon just adds more power to that Scorpio energy. Like it's it's like a double whammy of Scorpio. And um, 
what's so interesting is that Scorpio is all about death and rebirth and kind of having like a darker energy to it. And so it's interesting to me because this Aries and Jupiter and Pisces up here is very public, you know, right? She has an album, The Fame. So it's like very like, oh, I'm a superstar. I'm this pop star. Look how famous and cool I am. But it's making this trine to this very dark and almost kind of corrupting Scorpio. And, um, you know, because after the fame, she made an album, The Fame Monster, and also Born This Way. And I think it's so interesting because if you listen to her in interviews, she talks a lot about like, or just in general, like dying and being reborn. You know, she said something like, when she creates, she's worried about someone stealing her creativity. I mean, you could, I mean, if you use the Placidus house system, her moon and Pluto would probably be in the fifth house, which is a very creative house um, and about shining in your own light. But, you know, like she's very creative and she talks a lot about this death and rebirth and, you know, her album Born This Way um, is very much about this idea of birthing something new like creating something new even though it's weird and strange i mean i actually think probably her music video born this way it perfectly encapsulates and captures this jupiter and pisces trying her moon in scorpio because not only do you see like unicorns and like this really weird pisces like taking you to a, an alternate dimension kind of energy but it's about birthing a new race. It's about creating something new, you know, flaws and all, like just exposing it all, right? That taking that Scorpio energy that's just very like dark and mysterious, but it's very raw, you know. Again, Mars rules over Aries and Scorpio. And so you can see a lot of like that. You, you see a lot of Pisces and, and Aries, like, because what's interesting is that um, Neptune rules over Pisces and it's conjunct Mars, and Mars rules over Scorpio and Aries. Um, so you just see like like this merging of Pisces and Aries coming together. When, when I look at Lady Gaga, I see the fusion of Pisces and Aries, which is very cool. And, you know, Mars and Neptune, um, I just talked about this in my last video, but Mars-Neptune uh, gives like Again, like the way these people act, the way these people move in the world is very, um, you know, it's very like, I mean, it's great for acting. Like, I, I don't think it's that surprising that Lady Gaga is a phenomenal actor because Mars, like you see a lot of great actors with Mars conjunct Neptune. Like, it's just, that's just what happens when Mars conjuncts Neptune, right? Because these people... Because Neptune can be anything, right? It distorts, it dilutes, it just creates this kind of like this watery energy that can shape shift into anything. And so if Mars is like your action and your initiative, you can kind of be anything. You can be this chameleon, right? You you change and shape shift really well. You know, like Lady Gaga has this ability to transform, right? Like this dying and rebirth, she, she gives off this vibe of just, you can't really pin her down into anything because she's always changing and transforming into this new person. And you can really see it in, in her attitude and her philosophy of life, um, this creative transformation. And so it's very cool to see that in her chart. I love it very much. Um, and I feel like I ran out of steam. That's pretty much everything. Um, I guess on a side note, or, you know, this Mars and Capricorn makes someone very ambitious, very hardworking. Um, very, you know, powerful in their ability to uh, go after what it is that they want. I mean, you know, it, I mean, that Aries in the 11th house is exalted. It's always, it's already so powerful. And then this Mars rules over it and, ex and is exalted in Capricorn. So, I mean, she has a lot of really great placements, you know, um, like, like, this moon is debilitated in Scorpio, but then she has like an exalted Mars. And then she has this Mercury debilitated in Pisces, but then she has this domicile Jupiter. Um, and then she has like this Venus um, in the antithesis of Aries, but it's, you know, but then she has this exalted sun. So it's, it's interesting to see that strong, like planets that are really struggling, but then planets that are doing really well.
So yeah, that's it for her chart. Thank you for listening. Um, and I will see you later. Bye.